Ever pondered why planes soar over the North Pole but not the South Pole? It's a common question and the answer is quite fascinating. Welcome to the intriguing world of aviation, where every route, every decision, and every flight path is chosen with meticulous precision. In this world, even the poles aren't just the ends of the Earth. They play a significant role in determining flight paths. Have you ever noticed that most flights prefer the North Pole route and seldom fly over the South Pole? If you've ever wondered why, you're not alone. The reasons are multifaceted and quite intriguing, to say the least. They span from the complexities of the Earth's magnetic field to the unpredictability of weather conditions, and even extend to the realm of flight regulations. Each of these factors plays a pivotal role in the decision-making process of aviation authorities and pilots across the globe. Let's start with the Earth's magnetic field. It's not just a concept reserved for science textbooks, but a real, tangible force that guides our planes in the sky. It may sound like the stuff of science fiction, but the magnetic field is a crucial point of consideration when charting the course of a flight. Then there are the weather conditions. Weather, as we all know, is a force to be reckoned with. It can make or break a flight plan, and in the harsh and unpredictable conditions of the South Pole, it's often a deciding factor. And finally, there are flight regulations. Yes, even in the sky, rules must be followed. The regulations and emergency protocols in place for polar flights are detailed and strict, further influencing the choice between the North and South Pole. So you see, the decision to fly over the North Pole instead of the South is not just a whimsical choice. It's a calculated decision, based on a myriad of factors, each more fascinating than the last. Ready to explore these reasons in depth? Buckle up for an exciting journey into the world of aviation. First off, let's explore the Earth's magnetic field and how it influences flight paths. Imagine our planet as a giant bar magnet. It has a magnetic field extending from the North to the South Pole, which is invisible to the naked eye but incredibly influential. This magnetic field doesn't align perfectly with our geographical poles, instead, it's tilted at an angle. Now let's talk about compass navigation. A compass works by aligning itself with the Earth's magnetic field. When you're close to the equator, where the magnetic field lines are relatively straight, compass navigation is straightforward. However, as you move closer to the magnetic poles, these field lines begin to curve and dive into the Earth. This can cause a compass to behave erratically, making navigation more challenging. The North and South Poles are where the Earth's magnetic field lines converge. But remember, these aren't the geographical poles. They're the magnetic poles, and they don't stay put. They wander at varying speeds and in different directions. The North Magnetic Pole, interestingly, stays relatively close to the geographic North Pole. But the South Magnetic Pole? It's a different story. It wanders much further away from the geographic South Pole, making navigation near the South Pole particularly tricky. That's not all. The Earth's magnetic field isn't static. It changes over time due to processes deep within the Earth. These changes can impact the accuracy of compass-based navigation, especially at high latitudes. And given that the South Magnetic Pole wanders more unpredictably, it's no surprise that pilots prefer to avoid flying over the South Pole. So, the Earth's magnetic field plays a crucial role in determining flight paths, especially when it comes to the poles. It's not just about the shortest route or the most fuel-efficient path. It's about navigating safely and accurately in a world governed by invisible forces. So, the next time you're on a flight, remember, it's not just the pilot navigating the plane, it's also the Earth's magnetic field guiding us from beneath our feet. Next, let's delve into how weather conditions can influence flight paths. One of the most challenging aspects of aviation is weather. Unpredictable and volatile, it plays a significant role in determining flight routes, especially when it comes to polar aviation. Imagine an environment where temperatures drop to an unimaginable minus 89 degrees Celsius, where hurricane force winds whip up blinding ground-level blizzards. Welcome to the South Pole, a place of extreme weather conditions that pose significant risks to aviation. The cold is so intense that it can cause mechanical difficulties for aircraft, while the strong winds and blinding snow can make navigation and landing treacherous. Now think of the North Pole. Yes, it's cold, but not as severely cold as the South Pole. The Arctic region has its share of extreme weather, but the variations are often less extreme, making it a relatively more navigable region for planes, the North Pole lacks the high-altitude freezing winds known as polar vortexes that are common at the South Pole. 
These vortexes can result in sudden dramatic drops in temperature, creating hazardous conditions for aircraft. Another factor to consider is the presence of open water in the Arctic Ocean. Even when frozen in winter, the ice-covered ocean exerts a moderating influence on the weather. In contrast, the South Pole is a landmass covered by a thick ice sheet, devoid of any large bodies of water nearby, which leads to more extreme and less predictable weather conditions. In essence, while both poles present challenges to aviation, the North Pole is often more navigable due to its comparatively less severe and more stable weather conditions. This doesn't mean that it's a walk in the park to fly over the North Pole, it's just that the odds of encountering manageable weather conditions are better. Clearly, weather conditions are a significant factor in deciding whether planes fly over the North or South Pole. Finally, we'll look at flight regulations and how they impact flight paths. One of the key regulations that affect polar flights is the Extended Range Twin Engine Operational Performance Standards, or ETOPS for short. These regulations were initially put in place to ensure that twin-engine aircraft could safely reach an alternate airport in case of an engine failure. The ETOPS rules specify the maximum flying time on one engine that an aircraft is allowed to be from a suitable airport. For instance, under ETOPS 180, an aircraft must be within three hours of an alternate airport. This time limit is based on the aircraft's one engine in operative cruise speed under standard conditions. Now, let's shift our focus to the South Pole. The South Pole is a vast, uninhabited area with very few nearby airports. This poses a significant problem for flights in case of emergencies. If a plane were to experience an engine failure or other serious issue while flying over the South Pole, it would be far beyond the reach of any ETOPS time limit to reach a suitable airport. This inherent risk makes the South Pole less attractive for commercial airlines, despite the potential savings in flight distance and time. Moreover, even if an aircraft were able to land in Antarctica in an emergency, the harsh weather conditions and lack of infrastructure would make rescue and recovery operations incredibly challenging. This adds another layer of risk to South Pole flights. On the other hand, the North Pole has more nearby alternate airports, making it a more feasible route under ETOPS regulations. There are airports in northern Canada, Greenland and northern Russia that can serve as alternate landing sites in case of emergencies. Regulations and safety concerns therefore have a considerable influence on why planes prefer the North Pole route. Let's recap what we've learned about why planes fly over the North Pole but not the South Pole. We've journeyed through the intricate world of aviation, tackling some of the most intriguing questions about flight paths. We started our exploration with the Earth's magnetic field a fascinating natural phenomenon that plays a crucial role in navigation. We discovered that planes rely on the magnetic north for navigation, and the magnetic south is not as reliable due to the geographic south pole and the magnetic south pole being in different locations. This discrepancy creates complications, making the north pole a more preferred route for pilots. We then dove into the world of weather conditions and flight safety. The south pole, with its extremely harsh weather conditions and unpredictable storms, poses a significant risk for planes. The North Pole, although not without its challenges, offers comparatively stable weather patterns. This stability contributes to safer and more predictable flight conditions, making it the preferred path for airlines. Our journey continued with a look at flight regulations and emergency scenarios. We learned that the regulations for flying over the South Pole are more stringent due to the lack of nearby airports for emergency landings. In contrast, the North Pole has more potential landing sites in case of an emergency, making it a safer route for long-haul flights. So, all these factors, the Earth's magnetic field, weather conditions, flight safety and regulations, collectively explain why planes prefer to fly over the North Pole. It's not a random choice but a calculated decision made with safety, efficiency, and navigation in mind. So the next time you're on a long-haul flight and you find yourself flying over the icy landscapes of the North Pole, you'll know exactly why the South Pole isn't as popular a route. Thanks for joining us on this aviation adventure.